Good day everyone, my name is Daniel Malik and today I'm here at uh, Roslyn Hackathon and I have Marcel De Vries with me. Marcel, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, thank you. So, a lot of community work is happening down here. Yeah, you can say that. Quite a lot of guys are building some cool tools for... Roslyn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and. Um, that's why I have you here. We're going to talk about community work and how community code is being used in enterprise applications and mm -hmm. all sort of things. So what do you have for me today? So I would like to talk to you about uh, using open source in uh, your okay. applications and um, yeah, the, the, the risk that you need to be aware of and what kind of tooling you can use to help you figure out what's in use in your applications and to ensure that you don't have like known vulnerabilities in your code and also using licenses that are, um, are usable for you and you don't render yourself out of business uh, just by using the wrong licenses. You mentioned two important things, licensing and vulnerabilities. So. I don't think many people are actually aware how important those two things are. So can you tell me a little bit more about it? Yeah, sure. So so the thing is, uh, when you start using open source, that you need to be aware of the fact that there are multiple different licenses that uh, are attached to those different types of products that you pull in. And um, what you see is that there's more or less a licensing spectrum. You can see that uh, on the one hand, you have what they call more or less the viral licenses, which are the GPL licenses. And on the other hand, you have more like the attribution licenses. So uh, they are more like very liberal and you can just use it. As long as you state that you're using their stuff, they're, they're good with it. Now the thing is that as you're building your software, you need to be aware of the fact that you're using open source. And if you're using open source, what kind of license is attached to the components that I'm pulling in? Okay. And what you see this, th these days is that Microsoft is now being more open about using open source and even pushing new open source out there in yeah. the wild. Um, they have done quite well. Yeah, they've done really well. I mean, uh, if you see what they're doing with the open source uh, initiatives around uh, ASP.NET and uh, what they're going to announce yeah. uh, next week, uh, I mean, that, that's pretty cool. We'll stay quiet about that. We don't want to say anything. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so, uh, no, but they're, they're being really uh, good about using using open source these days and uh, and with that you also see that all of a sudden you as an enterprise or as, as at least as a consumer of open source need to be aware more of uh, what kind of licenses are in use but also if you're using like the attribution licenses also what are the known vulnerabilities of the software that yeah, I'm that pulling in question. so uh, and, and the thing is that there's a lot of open source out there with known vulnerabilities that are not fixed or are only fixed in newer versions and you need to be aware of what the in your software and uh, and that's uh, yeah that's that's the tricky part so how do you deal with that I mean I, I haven't seen any option that I could just go to the NuGet package manager and check for different yeah. licenses or scan my vulnerabilities. How do you deal with that stuff? Well, we, we might just dive into a demo and I'll show you more or less and becoming aware of what you're using and then based on that, have a look at what we can do to mitigate that problem. Go for it. Okay. So, um, if we hear, we're here in Visual Studio and what I can do is I can just start a new project and when I start a new project, I'm starting a web project, so ASP.NET web application. Yeah. Um, nothing, nothing special here, I'm just clicking OK, clicking OK, just using MVC and at the moment, you can see here in the bottom that it's pulling in all kinds of packages. You see jQuery, you see ASP.NET infrastructure, you see WebGrease and all that other stuff that, that they're pulling from uh, the open source repositories, which uh, for uh, the Microsoft ecosystem is NuGet. Okay, so yeah. NuGet is more or less the stream where you get in those, those packages from, yeah. from the outside. Now, if we go here and we go to the package manager, you can see what's being pulled in. Okay, so we can see here that the installed packages over here are all these things that we all of a sudden pulled in. Okay, now, of course, this is only me building an application. Imagine yeah. that you're in a corporation or an enterprise, and all these developers are pulling in sources from everywhere. So how do we need to cope with that? And that's I have seen quite a lot of clutter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and you need to be aware of that. For example, Antler here, well, uh, it doesn't really state what kind of licenses is in use here, right? Um, for Bootstrap, we might have a look. You see here, we can see the license information, and we can go to the license information. But then you need to go through each and every package and, and analyze what's, what's in use. It is quite painful, I have to say. Yeah, so there's a better solution to that. And uh, what I will show oh. you is that... Um, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what you can do is, uh, and I will show you here, is you can set up uh, a so-called proxy. 
and you can set up a proxy for NuGet so that everything that streams to these development machines all of a sudden go through that proxy and now I know at least what's being pulled into um, the sources that are being built. So uh, when I go here to my virtual machine, you see that I have a product here called uh, Sonotype Nexus. And Sonotype Nexus is in use for quite a while in the Java community. And y as you know, the Java community is, is, is being using open source like for ages. So yeah. those guys know that they need to deal with, with this open source stuff. Now for us as, as, as Microsoft guys, um, they added a feature to the Sonotype Nexus repository called their NuGet proxy. So if I go here, oh. You can see over here that I have a NuGet org proxy, and this is the proxy that we that I set up. Um, not want to show you that quite yet. Um, so here you see uh, the NuGet proxy, and if I browse here what's in that proxy, you can see that it more or less cached all the sources that were pulled from the web. Okay. Wow. So here you can see that for Entity Framework, they have the NuGet package that came from the web. Um, and it's not only functioning now like I'm catching all these sources, it also functions as a cache, which is also great because you get better performance than just going out to the web. So That's awesome. Yeah. So the only thing that we need to do is, uh, if you look here, I, I'm, I'm logged in as the administrator, I can go to the NuGet tab and I can see here that this is the URL that this proxy is now addressable from. Okay. Now, remember, I, I set up Team Foundation Server on this machine. It's uh, in Azure at the moment, um, so localhost will not work if I would go from my local machine here to that repository. So I need to oh, pre okay, yeah. prepend it with like the, the Azure website stuff. Okay. But this URL becomes a substitute for NuGet right. feed. So, right. So if if I go over here to the package manager, what I've done is if you go to settings, you can see that I set up to use NuGet here, and it's going to my URL on the web. And like you see, like you just saw, nothing really changes for you as a developer. But now I'm more at least in control of what you're pulling in. Okay. So that's one step because uh, you can imagine that you could just go and download stuff from the web as well. But how does that proxy now gives me any value? So I will get to that in a moment. So the idea is that we have the proxy now, we have the packages now over there on the machine, so we at least know what you pull in. Okay. Now there's this other stream of, of open source that can come in, which is perhaps not NuGet. Uh, you're okay. just pulling in something from the web, you download it, install it, and you're not using NuGet. Yep. So then you would have like a side stream which you cannot track. Now the idea is that with Team Foundation Server, we have the notion of Team Foundation build. And what we can do is there's this notion of NuGetter, perhaps yep. you have heard of that. And what you can do is for your own application, create a NuGet package. And what we can do is, if you look at uh, the Nexus repository here, you can see that there's this notion of an API key, and I can use this API key as well to publish to this repository. Mm -hmm. So when I create a build, I can now push that build to this repository, and now if you do that, yes. all of a sudden I not have the downstream packages, but also my upstream. Yeah. Okay, so I've, I've got everything in one central location. Now, and now you get to the second part of this, and the second part is that once I have all this in my artifact repository, you can have tools that then fingerprint what I call your sources. So they, they figure out like uh, this, this code, um, even if you change the names in that code, yep. is more or less the same as what we found in those open source repositories. And with that fingerprinting, they could do a match. And based on that match, they can look in their databases and see, oh, we know some vulnerabilities that might be oh, in really? that software. Or we can see this license type is in use for that particular package. Well, that, that is hilarious. Right. So, like I said, the Java guys have been doing that for a while. So I got the central repository here, which is a Maven repository. I did some Java builds as well. And what you see here is that here is a scan that's been done and it will be done once a day uh, normally, where they scan your repository here in Nexus, send out those fingerprints to uh, the guys at Sonatype. They will have their processes doing the an analysis and they will send you this report over here. So you can see now that this software over here has known vulnerabilities, for criticals even, and you see that in terms of the licenses in use, uh, what are the licenses that are actually in use here. Now, that is amazing. I, have, I haven't seen something like that before. 
No, and that's the, I try to create some awareness within the .NET community that this is stuff that we really need to be aware of. And I, I've, I've run into many people embracing open source, but not being aware of licensing issues and vulnerability issues. Because when you do the attribution license, you need to state what you're using. So if you're doing a website, you need to state that you're being using that open source stuff. Exactly. All of a sudden, all my attackers now know, oh, I know the vulnerabilities that are in that software, that so I can attack you. <laughs> so, um, and, um, so what I will do is I will... Uh, uh, um, um, so, so one of the things I want to show you here is that for NuGet, the Sonatype guys are building the same functionality as they've done for Maven. Um, and at the moment, you can see here that the scans that they've done is now the licensing scan. So I don't have the known vulnerabilities yet, okay. but they're working on a version that will do the same yeah. scans that you've seen in the Java space. And that will come out somewhere uh, Q4 uh, this year. So somewhere, somewhere near the end of the year, we will have those security vulnerability scans as well. Now, given these scans, you can also say, well, let's take that one step further because we're trying to strive to continuous delivery, okay? So we're doing this fix in our code and it needs to go through this continuous delivery pipeline. I cannot wait on this scan to give me information if I'm doing the right things. This might be interesting as a report that I, as like a CTO, as, as I'm, I am at the moment, look at every month and see what, in what shape I am. But for my continuous delivery pipeline, I would like to be able to stop my pipeline from publishing to the interweb. And that's possible. Yeah, so that's pos possible with uh, a tool called the CLM uh, tools, Component Lifecycle Management Tools. Oh, okay. And if you go here, I, I uh, put up a report already uh, that's um, based on the on the Java uh, package that I have. Yeah. And you can see the summary over here that we have like two two uh, uh, what they call policy alerts as well. So we can, with Component Lifecycle Management, we can set policies for our environment, what we allow in terms of licenses and known vulnerabilities. So okay. instead of going through your architect and asking him if you're allowed to use some of that stuff, you can set policies on what's allowed and what not. Really? Yeah, and you can integrate this in your continuous delivery pipeline as well. So you can more or less ask the tool, am I violating any policies here? And based on that, just guard you from actually publishing this stuff. Now, one of the things I would like to show you here is that you see the license analysis. So you see that these are the licenses that it found in my software. So here you see, for example, that it was not declared, but it might be like an Apache kind of license, but you need to dive into that and what it is. So it's doing a pattern matching? Yeah, it, it, so like the fingerprinting technology is behind wow. that. So they can fingerprint that and see then exactly what's going on there. So you see here the LGPL. So these are the licenses that I said were more in the middle of the spectrum. So you have yeah. like GPL, which is really the the, the uh, scans that are going on, uh, or, or sorry, that those are the things that are more viral, uh, and then you have like the um, um, attribution licenses which are which are well not so hard to deal with, yeah. and then you have like LGPL and the other licenses over here which are more like. Mm -hmm. Depending on how you link, all of a sudden it's viral or not. Yeah. So if you do like static linking, it might be, uh, and it might require you to publish your code as well as part of the license. Yeah. Or if it's uh, dynamically linked, all of a sudden you're free to use it. Yeah. Okay, so this is the stuff that you can then have a look at. Now if you look at the security issues that might be in your code, you can see over here that it did a scan on the code. And what you see here is that I can click right away in here and then see what kind of vulnerability was in there. So oh. it, it will go out to the internet and then you can see here in the common CVE database, what is the vulnerability that I'm exposed to? Now this is perfectly for me to do the remedi remediation of the problem, but it's also great for hackers because they exactly know what's in there, right? And, and exploit this. Um, so here you can see that this is just something that has to do with uh, Java code that um, yeah, uh, can expose static Java methods here, which is a known vulnerability that uh, you should mitigate. Now the great thing about these reports is that if you see here, I, by clicking this, it opened, and you can see the different versions of the product that wow. are out there in the open. You can see the licenses here as well. You can see how high the, the threat is in terms of really being exploitable or not. And you can also see that there's a newer version over here that would fix the problem. So 
what I can do now is, and they have the integration for like Eclipse tools already, to just go there, do an update of your package, and then know that you yeah. got rid of the vulnerability. That's the stuff they're working on as well. So they want to integrate in Visual Studio and all that kind of tools. Yeah. Uh, they're working on that. That will be out later next year. Okay. Um, but they're really serious about incorporating everything for the, the .NET community as well, yeah. as what they've done for the Java community. So um, I think that's really, really highly valuable valuable uh, tooling uh, that uh, that you then can incorporate in your in your products yeah can I as an architect push a newer version to the project repository? Uh, well, you, you can push to the repository, but st but the, the binding you do is like on the NuGet package, which is versioned. So if you, you could override the package, of course, but that's not okay. something that you normally do. Normally what you do is you go to the package manager and say, I want to update that package to a newer version. That's that's the, the best way of doing it. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. So uh, how about in terms of licensing? Can I, pre can I prevent some licensing? Uh, yeah, so with the policies, if, if you would integrate that in your continuous delivery pipeline, you can then ask as one of the stages in your build, uh, if there is, for example, a GPL license yeah. in there. And if, if you don't want to have these GPL licenses in there, then you can set up uh, a policy and that policy will be evaluated and then you will get like a yes or no answer and you can make that part of your build pipeline and then oh. block your build from being published to, uh, let's say, your, your production environment. Yeah. That is fabulous, Marcel. I, I have to say, I'm really impressed. Um, thank you for this demonstration. It was a pleasure talking to you, and let's see what these guys will produce. Huh? Yeah, we'll have a look later. Thank you for the time again. Yeah, you're welcome. My name is Daniel Malik. Uh, thanks for watching SSW TV. Stay tuned. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.